policy declared by Governor Kemp on March 14, 2020, and renewed most recently on November 30th concerning COVID-19 restrictions wow. in public meetings and because means have been afforded for the public to have simultaneous access to this teleconference. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you have in front of you an agenda. Please take a moment to review it and tell me any additions or corrections that you may have, and then I will entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve uh, today's agenda, December 11, uh, 2020, as uh, stated. Second for discussion. It has been moved and seconded, and we are now open for discussion, Mr. Johnson. Just one real quick note, and it's minor, but um, maybe important later. It says updates on preparation, number eight, I should re reference. Yes. It says update on preparations for the federal runoff election. Are we going to do, I don't see anything about the state elections because there's a public service commission race on the same day. This one specifically says federal, but it- Right. Let us call one of our staff to task on that. Mr. Barron? Yeah, that's part of the election. The Public Service Commission is on that ballot. And, and so then that was an error on my part. Ms. Ms. Bodison, you, you make no errors. It is all my tardiness. So let us uh, amend uh, number eight to the updated preparations for the federal runoff election and Public Service Commission so that our record shows that we discuss both when the time comes. Thank you. I, um, the, the lateness of your getting your agenda and everything else is fully my fault. All right, with that correction, which was a correction, uh, we have a motion and uh, uh, the maker of the motion accepts that correction? Yes, yep. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed, we have ourselves an agenda. Item number two is for communications by the public and responses. Um, and uh, Ms. Bodison, do, can you tell us how many members of the public potentially wish to be heard? And you are on mute, Ms. Bodison. Okay. Madam Chair, oh, I'm sorry. 14 attendees and seven comments. Seven comments. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, we have um, uh, a tight schedule and some statutory obligations to meet this morning. Um, uh, and I do not know with seven uh, commenters if we need to impose any restrictions. And hearing none, then uh, we will simply ask anyone making a comment to confine themselves to the two minutes uh, that is customarily allowed for our speakers with our thanks for doing so. Ms. Bodison, who is this first speaker? First, we have Gar Garland Favorito. Following, we'll have Brianna Jones. All right. Mr. Favorito. Thank you, Madam Chair and board members. I'm Garland Favorito, a career IT professional and co-founder of Voter GA, which stands for Voters Organized for Trusted Election Results in Georgia. We've been a leader in the elections integrity movement in Georgia for 16 years. On November 5th, I sent the board, elections directors, and the county attorney an open records request for the interim results files after I witnessed a bizarre 20,000 vote spike for former Vice President Biden in the Fulton County interim results. I received no response. On December 3rd, I submitted an open records request to view the absentee ballots while in custody of the elections division prior to publication of the recount results. Again, I received no response. On Monday, I followed up on the request with the board and stated the urgent need to view these ballots given the allegations of election fraud circulating nationally against Fulton County. Again, I received no response. 
The Georgia Senate hearing last week provided video footage, testimony, and corroborating documents of potential election fraud that appears to be more than enough to change the outcome of the presidential race in Georgia. The election line feed shows a huge spike in Biden votes just after the alleged illegal activity occurred. You can't just sit back and continue to ignore these concerns given that these activities may have overturned the will of the people in Georgia. I respectfully ask that you place this matter on the agenda today for discussion. You should immediately decertify the results, establish chain of custody for the Fulton absentee ballots in question, and allow public inspection of them beginning tomorrow. All Georgia voters deserve to know who rightfully won the electoral votes of our state. To do this, you must be willing to show us the ballots. Thank you, Mr. Favorito. Uh, is Ms. Jones next? Yes, Brianna Jones. Ms. Jones, you need to unmute if that is your problem. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I, um, I, um, we, are, we are getting echoes. So, Ms. Jones, it looks like you're on twice. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, I was, sorry, I don't know why there's still an echo. Um, basically my question is, Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones, we can't hear you. Are you on a secondary device as well? in addition to the one that you're speaking speaking on? Yes, yes, I am. Um, I wanted to know if the meeting that Mr. Johnson mentioned last week, um, where the election staff would be able to give their side of what happened, if that information would also be made available to the public, um, just because there is a lot of misinformation floating around. And I just, I want to know the truth and transparency of um, what happened um mm -hmm. during the video okay. that's circulating um and and i know he had mentioned about um about you guys potentially talking to uh the staff that was there so i just didn't know how that information uh from that meeting with the staff would be made available thank you thank Ms. you Rose. Ms. bodison who is next bridget thorne Ms. thorne I'm here. Um, I sent you all um, a fairly lengthy email. I apologize. Um, but if you read it, I thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm not going to go into the details because you all should have that email. If you do not, um, please let me know. Um, and I'm, I'm just concerned because I've been trying to make a change. I'm not trying just to make a point. I'm not just trying to bash Fulton County elections. I have reached out to countless people and I've gotten no response. I attended the State Board of Election meeting and I get muted the minute I mentioned that Dominion was running the warehouse. So I'm just hoping that our concerns, I think the things that I saw in the warehouse was just really disheartening for me. Um, and I've worked for nine years being a poll a precinct manager and I've always tried to make suggestions and ideas and offer to help. And, you know, I, I'm like, you guys had no check-in forms. Can I like make a check-in form so that at least when we turn in blank ballots, ballots that could actually be voted and turned in as absentee ballots, I have 400 ballots from my precinct that are missing. The warehouse doesn't know where they're at. And I'm just so saddened and disheartened that Larry Boone, a 20 year veteran precinct manager is now resigning, leaving his position. Cause he says that over the years, things have just gotten worse and worse and he just can't handle it anymore. I mean, Richard Barron was out delivering keys and pull pads on the night before the election. He delivered them to JC 14. Um, we got our equipment so late. We didn't even have time to look over stuff. They were delivering keys to my house at 10 o'clock at night. And then I needed a report at five in the morning. I mean, if you think that's organization and that this election was like really run really well and really organized, 
you just aren't listening. I, I, I want you just to listen to managers. I mean, and now I hear that Richard Barron is upset with three of the managers that testified at the hearing. And now he doesn't want us to work anymore. So now, great, just mute our voices. Just keep muting us. That's great. And we'll just keep on with the same old chaos that's gone on for nine years or 20 years. We'll just keep it going. And it, it just really disappoints me that there's no changes. And there's so many people that want our elections to be well, run well. They want it to be, they don't want it to be Fulton County was a mess again. It just seems like every year Fulton County is a mess. And I just want to reiterate that I'm not here as a partisan figure. I, I'm just listening to anybody who will hear my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thorne. Ms. Bodison, who is next? David Cross. Mr. Cross. Hello, my name is David Cross. I'm a um, resident of Gwinnett County and I attended the second um, the second recount down at the Georgia World Congress Center. And I got involved because I saw what I thought were um, irregularities in the voting. So I wanted to see for myself. When I went down there, I observed that ballots were being run through high speed scanners, but I could not see what the vote tally was for any candidate on the screens. I also observed that no hand counting was being done to compare the machine count, not once. That concerned me because I've seen video evidence of high speed scanners making counting errors on both large and small batches of as little as eight to 10 votes. Because I did not have a way to compare physical versus machine counts, I began to inspect other areas of the vote counting space, including the ballot transport bags. I identified nine ballot transport bags that were not secure and were missing the security zip tabs. Some of the ballot transport bags had the number of ballots inside listed on top. Some did not. I noticed that one bag indicated that it held 3,411 ballots. It seemed to me that the ballot transport bags in, questions, in question could easily be tampered with. If there were zero in some, which is plausible, and 3,400 in others, then an average of 1,700 times nine bags would give you over 15,000 ballots potentially in question. I was interviewed by a news organization down there because I was kicked out by, by the security as I went over to go show Garland Favrito and other witnesses that some of the bags were not secure. And I was accused of kicking one of the bags and I was, um, and I was told that I had to leave by security. It was a lie and Garland will, will, uh, will testify to the fact that it was a lie that I was kicked out. And, you know, people told me that, you know, that it, it was not possible. All the bags had to be secure. And what I'm telling you is that I saw nine bags that would totally fail the chain of custody um, or would, would totally fail to, to be included in your chain of custody. And if those nine bags had any ballots in them that could have been tampered with at any time, then Fulton County's entire election results would be invalidated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Ms. Bodison? Thomasina Lentz. Ms. Lentz. You are on mute, Ms. Lentz. Ms. Lentz, can you unmute yourself if that is the issue? I'm not hearing from Ms. Lentz. And if she is unable to do so right this minute, we can perhaps move on and come back, but move on. <laughs> to Ms. Susan Shapiro. Ms. Shapiro, who is also on mute. Yes. I am unmuted and I did not actually submit a request to speak today. So that's interesting. Oh, well, <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> but it's nice to be here and it, you know, things could change at a different meeting, but thank you. All right, and thank you. All right, Ms. Lentz, can you unmute? Okay. Tracy Atkinson. Ms. Atkinson, to whom I report. Yes. Good morning. I think I registered incorrectly. I did. 
Huh? All right. Ms. Atkinson, uh, always good to see you. Um, but And thank you for being here. Who else? That will conclude public comment, ma'am. All right. Thomasina Lentz, last call. We do not hear from you, so I will consider that item number two on our agenda for public communications is completed. Thank you to everybody. That brings us to item number three on our agenda, which is the approval of minutes from our special meeting on November 3rd and our regular meeting on November 13th. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? And if once you've had a chance to look them over, um, uh, I'll entertain a motion from anybody. So moved. Okay. We've got, got a motion to approve and a motion to uh, a, a second, I think I see from Mr. Johnson. All right. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. We had a speaker left out trying to get in. Uh, Caroline Jeff Ward, she said she was, she asked to speak and Betsy Kramer has her hand raised as well. Did they miss the opportunity to speak? Um, I, uh, okay, so here I'm looking at 14 attendees at the start of the meeting. And so Betsy Kramer was not on that meeting, but Caroline Jefford was, so I do apologize. Well, no, no worries, no worries. I just, um, we didn't have very many public speakers, so I didn't, you know, if they wanted to speak, I would hope they would get the opportunity to do so. Well, I see a uh, chat message, I guess, from Ms. Jefford stating that she wants to speak. Is it uh, the will of the board that we go back and, and take her comment? Yes. 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 Okay. Then uh, Ms. Jeffords, can you present yourself? Yes. And unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I So I am a lifelong uh, resident of Georgia, currently living in Fulton County. I was credentialed to serve as a volunteer GOP monitor for the Georgia vote recount at the World Congress Center in Atlanta on November 14th. Uh, prior to arriving, I viewed instructional videos and read over information for proper pro protocols and procedures to follow so I could be prepared as a monitor. I arrived around 12.45 p.m. for my 1 to 5 p.m. shift. I immediately witnessed and observed several deviations from the procedures and protocols that were outlined to be followed in the ballot counting process as several of the, um, at several of the tables. Some examples are, um, it was immediate, and, and this is a comment as well, it was immediately apparent that there was just no consistent uniform to the workflow process being followed by the counters who were doing the procedures in several various ways. Counters were also eating and drinking and their, um, their personal belongings were on the tables, um, all while they were counting. Some counters also appeared to consistently receive ballot suitcases with thousands of votes to count while others seemed to receive small batches to count or would constantly be having their arm raised to receive more suitcases of balance to count. There was also at least one table, um, table 123, and this was as soon as I walked in that caught my eye because a gentleman was sitting there counting ballots at the table by himself. I have photos of this and I have video of this. Um, ballots were also stacked in the back and multiple on pallets um, and multiple and like carry on suitcases. You guys are probably all familiar with that, but the area was extremely insecure, unsecured. I have video of that as well. Anybody could walk up and grab a suitcase of ballots. There were also numerous instances of counters not following the proper process, including counters leaving their table in the middle of counting and not recording a tally prior to getting up and leaving, even though other tables, people were sitting there and eating. Um, I recorded table numbers and tallies that I was able um, to, to do so, and I can provide that as well. At approximately 2.57 p.m., almost two hours following my arrival and witnessing many concern, concerning activities, at table number 124, 
and this was just such a blatant disregard to the procedures, I raised my hand and asked to speak to a, an election recount supervisor because as a monitor, I am not allowed to speak with the counters. I had trouble getting a supervisor. I was asking people, please get me a supervisor, please. Um, it took several minutes for anyone to arrive. I found, my, um, I, I found a familiar face and grabbed her arm and asked her to go and find me a supervisor while I stayed at the table to continue monitoring. The first person to arrive was Mr. Richard Barron. I did not know who he was at the time. I have learned later that he is the Fulton County Elections Director. And following him arrived Karen Ficklin, who did introduce herself as a supervisor. Approxim and uh, minutes following, approximately six to other Democratic monitors proceeded to kind of gather around. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm missing my notes here. I also um, then saw Carter Jones, the state board appointed elections monitor, and I asked him to come over and assist me. I also shared, saw Ms. Cheryl Ringer um, at another table and, and she came over um, from table 122 where she was sitting and watching the table because the two people there had left, left to go eat for some reason. Um, my, my conversation with Mr. Barron quickly became very confrontational as he seemed very defensive and irritated that I was bringing these violations to his attention. He began speaking to me in quite an aggressive and condescending manner, very disrespectful, very confrontational, and very rude. It was very obvious he was not concerned about any breach of protocol and did not even dispute what I had witnessed was a violation. Jeffers, two minutes, ma'am. Jeffers, can you conclude your, your sentence that you're speaking right now? Um, yes, Mr. Rick Barron ignored um, complaint, ignored my call as a monitor to acknowledge um, protocols and workflow that was not being followed on the floor, acknowledged it was not being followed on the floor, told me there was nothing, no way for me to make a complaint about it. Okay. And, and intimidated. Wait, wait. Wait, we're only going to take a couple of clauses to that sentence. Um, thank you very much. Um, I hope that you uh, submit things in writing to us as well. All right. Oh, I have. I have. Okay. No um, one's listening. <laughs> All right. Um, that, I assume, does conclude our, um, our public comments. We are back onto where we were, which is approval of minutes. We had a motion and a second. Am I correct on that, Mr. Johnson, that you seconded a motion to write? And so I am asking again, um, uh, any um, uh, corrections or additions and otherwise, I will call for a vote of approval. And I will now call for a vote of approval and everybody knows what to do. All in favor, please raise your hands and say aye. 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 And, aye. and that is unanimous. I saw everybody, thank you, for both our special meeting November 3rd and our regular meeting November 13th, which brings us to item number four, the, mo the monthly operations report for November, Mr. Barron. Uh, good morning. We've got uh, number eight on the agenda, which has to do with the November or the January preparations. So we are, um, I will save most of that. Anything for January, I'm going to try to save for that. Okay. With regard to the Elections Division report, we had, of course, 30 early voting locations for the November 3rd election. And we had outreach sites that that were operating two to three days in op uh, duration, except for Palmetto, which was almost uh, two weeks in operation. We also had our two mobile units that we used that were the buses. We then also prepared for the 5th Congressional and 39th State Senate runoff early voting, which occurred over uh, starting on November 9th and then on November 23rd, it started for state Senate Democratic primary runoff and early voting concluded on the 25th. There were 10 early voting sites for that election. We have been also preparing for the January 5th U.S. Senate Public Service Commission runoff, uh, which I'll go into more uh, with for November or uh, and number eight. We um, 
we are coordinating for with Dominion to schedule field technician training beginning the week of December 14th next week for 254 poll technicians to be uh, trained to fulfill our technical support <coughs> for the January election. We have, uh, Dream was able to get us an auxiliary warehouse out in Hapeville in addition to the EPC on English Street. And we will be using that after we get out of Georgia World Congress Center, which is where we're doing logic and accuracy testing now. Uh, the poll pads will continue to be prepared at the, at the EPC. We are trying to um, work on an automated program for check-in on election night, uh, which is almost complete. To, to make the operations of the check-in facilities more streamlined on election night. We, our bandwidth issues out at the EPC, um, we, don't, we don't have issues with bandwidth anymore out, out there. Uh, the cash box, the purchase of the cash box, the Meraki devices, upgrading the county IT department, uh, the switch is upgrades for, by county IT that that helped us. So all that additional investment made things much better for uploading the um, bulk file into all of or downloading that and be, then being able to upload it into the poll pads prior to the election. Uh, we participated. We continue to participate in many virtual meetings with the strategic planning office for the county. And we had several virtual meetings also with poll, poll managers as well as election day line managers for the December election. And those will also continue to take place ahead of the January election. We are um, underway with logic and accuracy testing for the federal election and I will move on to vote the voter registration division now. We have processed 298,767 voter registration applications this year. We received 28,742 applications in November. As of December 1st, we had 854,135 uh, total registered voters in Fulton County. 815,519 are active, 38,616 are inactive. And as you can see for November, um, we, 2020, that was the, the, the most um, applications we've ever processed for um, November, at least, well, at least since 2012. And I'm sure that would hold a record going back into the previous century for for November. Um, we also have mailed 765 letters to voters who are suspected felons. We have zero scheduled hearings on those for this month. And we've done two deputy registrar drives. We have one vacant position in voter registration, which we are looking to fill shortly. Uh, we issued 61 TVICs and we are uh, run back began mailing out the absentee by mail ballots on November 30th. Many voters have issue dates of November 18th. The, the state's first mailing was on the 30th. It seems as though most voters are receiving their ballots uh, now. And we are going to mail, Runbeck will continue to mail our ballots until December 11th. And we will take responsibility for mailing the ballots after, after that. Um, as it says here, which I was going to go over in more detail in, the, in, in item eight, our absentee ballot signature, absentee credit for voting and scanning will take place at GWCC. And it won't, it's going to start on actually December 14th rather than December 9th. With regard to the administrative division, um, a draft of the proposed budget was submitted to departments for review. We, we have, uh, with input from the county manager's office, submitted our budget for next year. And the administrative division staff helped out during the hand count audit at Georgia World Congress Center. They've been also helping out 
verifying voter history with early voting applications and other so other duties since it's more difficult for them to to get out into the public if they aren't doing virtual events and that is my report for the operations for november all right members of the board questions or comments i have a trivial question to ask you to repeat on what day are we going to take over from Runbeck of sending out absentee ballots? Anything that is entered through December 11th, we uh, Runbeck will mail, and then we will take over after that. Okay, so on December the 12th, Fulton County will take that over. I do get a number of questions. All right, other questions, Dr. Ruth. Uh, thank. You. 